Hey guys, Phil here, and so you may have seen my other video on doing 3D scanning for free with a camera. And so I found some other software for it that's a little bit easier and also free. Uh, it's from Autodesk called Memento, and it is beta though. So it, while it still works pretty good, it may not remain free. So we'll see. First thing we have to do is take some pictures. Now, I'm going to turn my autofocus off on this and then just focus once. And that, that way I can take the picture and as long as I stay within the same kind of distance, then it'll still be in focus and it makes it a lot easier. Like with my other video, you may have noticed that I'm taking some pictures and coming up and taking some more another picture and moving over, taking a picture and coming back down, taking another picture and just making sure I get every possible angle. And for some other detailed areas, <laughs> for some other detailed areas, you want to get really up close and get multiple shots of those areas up close. Okay, so now that all of your photos are shot and you've transferred them over to your computer, we're going to open up Autodesk Memento. And you can get this from the website, which I will link in the description. And so once you got it installed, and you will have to set up an Autodesk membership, which is free. Uh, and so once you got it installed, you're going to come over here to the Photos button. And you can see on top, you, it'll accept photos or handheld scans from an Artex scanner. And then uh, once you have uh, stuff uploaded, it appears down on this bottom row, which you can see I've got some other projects here. And then when it's finished, it appears in the middle. So start with some photos and then we can click local drive. And then we just click anywhere to add your photos. And now I've got the photos here, so I'll just click and then I'll shift A, oops, or I'll control A to select them all. And then we'll just click open. And you can see it loads all the photos up. And we'll just make sure they're all loaded up. Okay, and then we just click create model. And you have to give the model a name, so I'm going to call it Eagle, Eagle two because I already made one earlier and you can choose the quality draft or best I've never even used the draft so I just always have best selected and advanced uh, the smart crop I just keep that at off uh, and then just click start and you can see it'll start uploading the images here's the one that I already have finished and you can see it's at six percent and it'll upload them and it doesn't take too long, but then it'll start processing and it'll first, it'll say waiting in queue. And that's one of the other downsides to this is that uh, the queue, it all depends on how busy their servers are. It can take 20 minutes to finish your model or it can take the whole day. Uh, this one that I did earlier, actually I had to wait until the next day to, to see if it worked out well. Uh, it's half done uploading. Okay, and so yeah, it'll just upload. 
and I'll just wait until it's finished so I can show you that it says it's waiting. Okay, so now it's done uploading, and now it's at 0%, registering, and now it just says waiting in queue. And it'll just sit there saying 1% uh, until it's done. And the great thing is that uh, now it's all uploaded and it's, ha it's all happening on their server. So you can actually close the program and then just come back later and open it up and have a look. And so I'm just going to stop this one now because obviously I already have one finished that I can show you. So I'll just stop that. I want to stop, yes. And so here's the one that I already had finished. And once it's finished, it'll appear up here and it'll ask you to download. And it's an RCM file. So here's the one that I had downloaded, or that I had finished, and we can open it up, and this is how it looks. And it actually captured a lot more than what I was expecting. So I can zoom in with the mouse wheel. Uh, one thing that I'm very happy with that they just added was that the uh, one that I was using before, you had to use this thing to rotate around. And it was very frustrating. There was no way to just use the mouse to drag it around. But now they've added so you can just use the right mouse button to, to rotate or orbit and the left mouse button to pan and then the mouse wheel to zoom in. And you can see here's the eagle. And so we have obviously all this other stuff back here that we don't need. And so can come down to the selection box and I can actually select a, a lasso type of marquee selection and this is one thing that annoyed me with the other software is it didn't have this so I can actually drag a, like a round area and select it all and just hit the delete key and just get rid of all of that so I can just get rid of all of that pretty much all in one or two selections. And rotate around, I've got a little bit of extra here. I'll just delete that. And rotate some more, let's zoom in. And so now I can select the rest of that and that pretty much handles it. And so now this like kind of X one will fit it to view. And that's pretty good. And of course, I might want to get rid of the table as well. So I can use the lasso to just, oops. I can use the lasso to just make a straight line across there. Just delete, rotate it around. And there you get the idea. So one issue that I also have with this is that it looks pretty good, but it is it automatically decimates the mesh. So uh, if you're going to open it up into another software where you need a denser mesh, you may not be able to do that. So if we look at the visualization and we pick the wireframe, you can see it's fairly dense, but some areas are not so dense. <laughs> such as down here, if I look at this area right here, if I want to bring this into another texture that uses uh, uh, the points for the coloring, then it's going to be a little bit blurry instead of using the image where it doesn't matter how many points there are. And so it has another couple of cool tools that uh, you might be able to use in uh, some of the other software, but they you know, are a little bit easier to use here. Uh, for example, I, I don't think that's a hole, that's another spot, that's something else. But uh, say you have a little hole, for example, if uh, I know I, this is uh, terrible to do this, but if I accidentally have a hole, then oh no, I can come up to edit and I have slice and fill, surface tools, and there's a few other things in here that uh, 
there are ways to fill the holes. Like, like if I make a selection around the hole and then click the fill holes, it knows how to fill the hole in. And it actually looks pretty good. So that's pretty much it. And of course, if you want to go back to the dashboard, you can always go back there and then go back in here. Oops, do I want to save the changes? Yes, I'll save. Okay, and let's zoom in. Yeah, and so then if you want to export the model, you can come up here and click export. And you have a few options in here. You can save it as an OBJ or a few different types. And I use uh, LightWave, which uses Y up. So I check that box. And then you can decimate it even further, which you know might be handy if you're using this for a game or something. And there are a few other options, uh, such as you, know, you can rebake the textures to a different size. Uh, and that does take a lot of processor work on the server. So sometimes uh, in the past that caused problems, maybe that's been fixed now. And of course, by the time it's out of beta, that probably won't be a problem. So that's pretty much it. Um, since I'm here, I might as well clean up the rest of this table. It's bugging me that it's not there. So. A nice straight edge on there. Rotate around. Get another straight edge. All right, so that's taken care of. And let's take a closer look here. And I'm going to see if I can. Uh, get rid of that. Go back to the selection, or the arrow. And you can see there were a few slight problems when this one was finished, such as around the eye area. Now if I'm going to bring this, uh, well I would normally bring this into 3D Coat to fix this uh, with this painting tools, but again, it's not really a high resolution there. So if I bring this into 3D Coat, I may lose some of the texture detail. So that's one problem I have. Um, so I don't know, maybe there's some other software that uh, won't have that issue. But yeah, that's our Eagle. Nice uh, 3D scan, pretty good. I wonder if I can fix that. That'd be the selection, see if I can fix this spot. And, well, I guess that's not actually a problem. But yeah, so we've got our eagle there. If you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you learned something, please consider making a donation on my main channel page. That really helps to make these videos possible. See you next time.